If one O-ring is good, then four O-rings must be four times better. Yo, bro, you would not believe what happened today. Yo, I'm doing something important here. Is that operation? Not sure what happened, but my mechanical keyboard, it stopped working today. Since when did you use a mechanical keyboard? Uh, this? Mechanical. Anyways, since my Apple magical keyboard broke today, I'ma let you build me one. What? Let me build you one? Yeah man, I saw this other like uh, nerdy keyboard dude on YouTube like you, um, and he said like uh, a cult key was pretty good, so just build me one of those in purple. A cult key? Uh, a key cult? Do you even know what- you know what? Never mind. You know what? You look more like a TGR Jane or Alice kind of guy. Why don't I just build you one of those? Jane and Alice? I'll take one of each. Yo, get yourself a real hobby! Like sports! I play Overwatch! You're still building me a keyboard, right? I need it for next week. Welcome back to the channel, this is Scott K. Being in the keyboarding hobby, we do get asked by friends and family for awesome builds. Issues that most premium boards are on group by and likely would require a very long wait. That's where the Draw Control High Profile comes in. When you're looking for a premium custom mechanical keyboard that you could pretty much buy anytime, this is the ultimate gateway into the custom mechanical keyboarding hobby. Let's get started. Some say that the drop control and alt are not really custom, and it is true if you're buying the pre-built models, but today we'll be taking the full custom approach and picking and buying each component separately. This means the case, the PCB, the light diffuser, the switches, the caps, the stabilizers, the foam, you name it, all would have to be purchased and built. Let's start by unboxing the keyboard case from the box. For this build, we didn't go for the plain black or silver, but the striking lilac anodized finish for some uniqueness. Here is a closer look at the LED diffuser and PCB. The PCB we'll be using is the Drop Control PCB, which is fully customizable with QMK. The PCB features full KO hot swap sockets and features per key LED as well as LED underglow that lights up the diffuser to many different color options. And yes, love it or hate it, the control is an integrated plate, which requires some precautions to reduce the ping and make it sound great. That's where this foam comes in. The foam we'll be using today is the custom pre-cut foam from Stupidfish. All pre-cut and ready to go, it's one of the best options out there today. The application is super simple, you just pull the foam apart and everything is custom cut to fit every keyboard perfectly. Take each section and place it into their respective spots, and it's just easy as that. Just for good measure, I took my adhesive vinyl foam and placed it in areas where the main foam does not cover. Also applied some to the area underneath the spacebar as well. Hey, you can never have too much foam. Now that the foam has been applied, we're ready for the assembly process. Take your PCB and place it gently onto the top case and the plate assembly. Make sure to line up the USB-C connections well and clear the standoffs on the plate. Now, gently place the LED light diffuser panel on top of the PCB and make sure the little tabs are installed properly to hold everything together in place. Now time for the foam again. The Stupidfish foam package comes with a full set to cover the lower part of the PCB as well to reduce the ping between the lower case and the PCB. Same as we have done before for the plate, take each individual section and gently place it into each little crevice. Now, not exactly sure what these little metal pieces do, but I assume they add a little bit more weight and cover these exposed holes to help keep the underglow lighting working as evenly as possible. The top portion of the keyboard is now ready to go. Now here's a good look at the lower case. Notice the large crevice in the center. We will need to fill this. Once again, the foam kit includes all the necessary foam to fill every crevice. 
I also love this little detail imprinted onto the foam as well. Now we start the full assembly process. The top and bottoms have to be joined together, and the supplied screws will keep everything together in place. The keyboard itself is complete, now we're ready to move on to the stabilizers. Since the control only accepts plate mount, I opted to go with the new Duroc plate mount stabilizers. Unlike their screw in variants, the plate mount version comes with these little tabs that should be cut off for a clean bottom out feel. I use the flesh cutter to just chop off these two unnecessary legs. This process is not entirely required, but I do prefer to reduce the mushy feel of the stabilizers by cutting these flexible bits off. Then I lube the stems and the housing of the stabilizers with Krytox 205 grade 0 for maximum smoothness. Then, I fill the stem cavity with Permatex dielectric grease so that I could eliminate any potential rattles. You may have noticed a little something in this hole. I will cover that in a video in the future. Now put everything together and it's now ready for assembly. Before we install the stabilizers onto the plate, I would strongly recommend doing the band-aid mod here for all the plate mounted stabilizer applications. This helps to dramatically improve the tightness of the stabilizer housing and reduce any potential rattle or noise you may hear. You cut a small piece of band-aid, then apply it to one edge of the stabilizer cutout. Then you wrap the band-aid around the edge to help to create a tighter fit. Now all the stabilizers are installed, and we can move on to the next step. For this build, we wanted to go for a more tactile experience, so we opted for the Glorious Panda switches. I ended up lubing these Glorious Pandas with Crytox 205 grade 0 instead of the usual 204, so that we can control the pinginess that the Glorious Pandas could typically create. Being a hotspot PCB, the switch install is a breeze, and it also allows for quick and easy swap outs in the future. The switches are installed and it's now ready for the caps. The caps we went with are HK Gaming Die Sub Thick PBT caps. I will provide the links in the description. Yes, these are cherry profile caps, and yes, this board is north facing LEDs. However, I did not see any glaring issues with the housing and cap interference in this situation. You can also listen for it yourself in the typing test video and pay attention to the enter key on R3 to see if you hear any problems. Finally, we installed this frowny face computer artisan to finish the overall look. There you have it, the drop control high profile is complete. This build was such a breeze and so easy to do. If you're looking to just get into the hobby and looking for a premium TKL custom keyboard that you'd like need right now, I would say give the Drop Control High Pro a consider. I love how this color combination turned out. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks. And now for the typing test. Enjoy.
Go.